Welcome back to this edition of Inside the Garage where we're covering four easy steps for you before you buy that older used vehicle. So perhaps there's a first time driver in the family, or maybe you're just looking for a backup vehicle, a vehicle that you're going to drive back and forth to work. You're not gonna to wanna to spend a whole lot of money for. You've researched the internet, and you've narrowed down and met a seller. Now the seller is going to try and give you all kinds of goodness about their car. These are steps that I can give you that can help you narrow down a potential lemon. The first thing that we're going to do is we want to road test the vehicle and specifically we're looking at aspects of steering, stopping and stability. Let's take this Honda for a drive. So you've narrowed down the vehicle you're going to buy. This Honda we're going to test drive. The first thing that you're going to do is going to start the engine. You want to make sure that it does start clicking the key. Now if you've got clicking, you may have an issue with a battery or battery connection or possibly a starter. If it has more cranking revolutions, in other words it just seems like it turns over a lot more than it should before it fires up, that could be a major problem with fuel delivery or ignition or perhaps one of the air fuel management sensors. So the road test obviously is a key component of whether you're going to buy the vehicle or not. If you're hearing loud noises and uh, the vehicle just feels like a death trap and it's got all kinds of wobbling going on, that may be an indication that you don't want to buy that vehicle. And during the road test, you want to make sure that you start off with braking. And as that vehicle starts to brake, you want to make sure you got a nice smooth stop. If you've got a pulsation or vibration as you're braking, that's an indication that you may have a brake rotor that is warped. It's not the end of the world. Brake rotor that's warped may need to be replaced or perhaps it can be resurfaced. It could be a simple repair. If your brake pedal starts to fade all the way down as you're braking, perhaps turning on a brake light, now that's something a little bit more major and that's going to require some more attention. The overall steering feel is extremely important. The steering should feel tight, it should not feel loose or wobbly. If the steering feels really loose, as if you've got a lot of play, or it takes more effort to engage a turn, there's probably an issue with the steering system. You could have an issue with the steering gear, or perhaps you've got an issue with the steering linkage. It is really vital to pick up clues as you're steering. So the suspension is really all to do with the stability of the vehicle. If you're buying a vehicle that's over 100,000 miles, you've probably got some worn parts underneath the suspension. Now, that's not the end of the world. Some worn parts may not pose a dangerous situation. A dangerous situation would include any stability issues. So if you're hitting a rut in the road and the vehicle wants to kind of track into the next lane, that's a major problem. Or perhaps you've got a death wobble from extremely warm suspension parts, that could be a major issue. Now during the road test, you want to make sure that you take it on a rough road area. You don't want a perfect surface because you really want to get an idea and feel for how the suspension is. Now, if you've got over 100,000 miles on a vehicle that you're looking to purchase, the struts and shocks are probably aged. We want to make sure they're not completely broken, but the fact is if they're aged, you're going to get a harsher ride. What you don't want to have is any serious clunking or tracking into the next lane of traffic as you're going over these rough road areas. So the road test is the first and vital component of a four-step process that you can check. During that road test, make sure you check the steering, stopping, and stability. Let's head back to the shop as we examine the number two vital step, and that is the rubber of the tires. There's so much that you can tell with tires. In this case, these tires are brand new. It's always best to ask the seller for any tire warranty. You can tell when the tires were replaced and potentially you may have a warranty that can carry over. So as that tire is rolling 
on the ground, there are some clues that you can look for. If you've got some outer tread wear, or perhaps you've got some inner type tread wear, there's a good indication that there's a problem with the suspension. Now that problem may be minor. It may need an old fashioned alignment. So you wanna ask the seller when the alignment was last done. Now, if an alignment is not going to take care of the situation, typically you'll see lots of wear uh, throughout the tire, and you're going to have an idea during that road test if you've got a lot of play in the steering or just overall feels harsh, you really want to get the suspension and steering systems inspected. You may have an idler or pitman arm, or perhaps you've got some steering linkages that are shot on the vehicle, and that's going to mean you're going to have to spend more than just the cost of an alignment. Just like your favorite beer, tires do have a born on date and they will expire. Most tires are usually good for five years, so no matter what that tread looks like, you want to make sure you check the born on date. Come on down. It's an easy to establish number. It's a four digit number indicating the 25th week of 2015. In this case, this tire is good to go, so make sure you check the born on date. So we're at the halfway point with the first two vital steps before you purchase an older vehicle with some miles on it. I want to recap, number one is to road test the vehicle, steering, stopping, and stability. Stay in tune to how that all feels and sounds. Number two, check the tire condition. You can get a lot of clues from how the tire is wearing and also checking that born on date to make sure that those tires are not expired. Third step as we approach it right now is the fluids. You can get a lot of clues from the condition of the fluids. Let's take a look. In most occasions, checking the engine oil is not difficult at all. Look for the colored dipstick, pull that dipstick out, and what you're doing is you want to make sure that the engine oil level is full. It is not extremely low. Again, if the engine level is low, that engine's going to be making noise. The other thing that you want to check for is the condition of the oil. That oil should be sort of a middle to dark brown color and not have any contaminants. If it feels really grainy or gritty, there could be contaminants in the engine oil. That could be excessive wear in the motor. The other thing to check is to make sure that that engine oil does not have any shiny metallic flakes. That's another indication that the engine is wearing pretty bad and it may not be your choice buy. One of the most crucial things that you can check with your engine oil that's not difficult at all is to ensure that that engine oil does not have any water or oil mixture. If you've got water in the engine oil, that's an indication that the vehicle may have overheated. That water and oil mixing will look like chocolate milk. So if you actually take a sample of that engine oil and you see any water, chocolate milk-like substance, stay clear away. That's an indication that that motor has sustained some heavy, heavy overheating. So the other vital fluid that you really need to be checking is the transmission fluid. Automatic transmission fluid is vital to make sure that you check that. Now during the test drive you may not have had any shifting issues. It didn't delay shift. It didn't flare shift. It didn't seem to give you any reason to believe that there was a problem in the transmission. You still need to check the transmission fluid. Like the engine oil dipstick, it will be a certain color. You can look for it. You can pull it out and then you're checking the levels. You want to make sure that the transmission fluid is not extremely low. The other fact is you want to make sure that the transmission fluid is not contaminated. There aren't any metallic flaking or metal chunks in that fluid as you check it. Now most automatic transmissions will have a reddish tint, maybe a slight reddish brown. You don't want to have any black or burnt. If you smell it and it smells burnt, then that's a problem in the transmission. Additionally, there are CVT transmissions that will be a lighter color to a brownish color, and you wanna make sure you check those as well. If you've got a five-speed or a six-speed manual transmission, you wanna check that gear oil. You'll have to sample that and make sure again, very important, that there aren't any metallic flaking or metal components in that transmission fluid. Brake fluid is really important to check. Now on the test drive, the brakes felt pretty good. Again, let's look for clues in the brake fluid. That brake fluid should not have any contamination. One thing that you can do is you can get these really inexpensive test strips. And these test strips will actually check to make sure that the brake fluid does not have any moisture. Moisture is the enemy to any brake system. So as you're testing, you dip that test strip inside the fluid reservoir 
and you look for that fluid to change colors. Now if that fluid color changes more to a purplish lavender color, that's an indication that that system's contaminated. And I can tell you that if you have a contaminated system, it's gonna cost you lots of money because in most occasions, you've gotta flush out that contaminated fluid and replace most, if not all, of those rubber components. Number two to check in brake fluid is take a flashlight, shine that flashlight up to the brake fluid reservoir, and you can get a good idea of what that fluid looks like. If the fluid is nice and clear, that's thumbs up. Don't be fooled by a tinted brake master reservoir. That reservoir may have a brownish tint and may make the fluid seem like it's contaminated. So quick easy steps to checking brake fluid. Engine coolant is another vital fluid to check for. Engine coolant can have many different colors. Traditionally it can have a green color. Uh, some of them can be orange. Toyota can be more of a reddish. The bottom line with coolant is A, you want to make sure that the levels are good to go like all the other fluids. If that fluid level is low, that's an indication that there may be a leak somewhere. So you want to make sure that there aren't any coolant leaks. The other fact is you want to make sure that there is no oil and water mix. You can pull the cap, in this case off the radiator itself, and make sure that there is no chocolate milk. Coolant mixed with engine oil will give you a chocolate milk substance and that's an indication to stay clear away because again that vehicle may have had a serious overheat episode. A power steering fluid Another fluid to check, really, really important. If that fluid is low during the test drive, you may have experienced some whine when you're steering. And if you experience some whine, that's an indication that the power steering system is more than likely low. Power steering fluid will also have an indication there is a colored cap. You want to pull that cap off and check the levels. If the levels are low, that's an indication that you've got a leak somewhere. And power steering lines can be expensive, so you want to make sure that you're checking to make sure there aren't any leaks or perhaps any components that are defective. Again, during the test drive, if as you're steering, you've got a whine or a growl, that's an indication that your power steering system may have a compromise and that could get expensive. So we covered the road test, the steering and stopping and stability. We also covered the importance of checking for clues on the tires. Thirdly, we covered the fluids, looking for clues with those fluids. Number four step, and probably one of the easiest things that you can check, is the dash lights. Now I will tell you that if the check engine light is on steady with no symptoms, there's a good chance that you've got some problems with one of the emissions devices. Now emissions device failures are not going to cause a drivability or cause the engine to run rough. However, it can get costly, so you want to make sure that you check that out. The other thing is with the check engine light, if you're driving the vehicle and that check engine light is flashing, that's usually an indication that the engine is misfiring and there are other issues. It could be with injection, could be with ignition. So that check engine light is really, really crucial. If that check engine light is on or flashing, you really need to get that over to a certified mechanic so that they can tell you exactly what is going on so that you're not overspending on that. The other thing too is if you've got an airbag light, that's an indication that the vehicle must have been in an, in an accident. You may have had uh, an issue with an airbag exploding and that one of the airbags may be missing. Now some of you may be okay with driving a vehicle without an airbag and technically everything else is driving fine, but you want to make sure that you find out why that airbag light is on regardless. The third light is that ABS or traction control light. The ABS traction control light, if that's on, you'll still have base braking, but you won't have that anti-lock brake or traction control. So if you're driving in Alaska, that could be a problem. However, you will still have your base braking. So again, you wanna take that into your certified mechanic and let them diagnose that effectively so that they can tell you exactly what's wrong because those components can get real expensive to repair. So there you have it. Four simple steps to check before you buy that internet deal. The reality of it is you really need to check with a certified mechanic. Let them inspect the vehicle with a fine tooth comb. It is your peace of mind. Just like buying a house, you'd have it inspected. You really want that internet deal to be inspected before you buy it. I'm Frank with this edition of Inside the Garage. I appreciate hanging out with you guys. Stay tuned for the next series coming up real soon. If you like the video, subscribe. Stay tuned because we've got a whole lot from the Inside the Garage.